Hey everyone, welcome back to Cyber Grey Matter. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a DMZ, or Demilitarized Zone. My goal for this video is to leave you thoroughly knowing what a DMZ is all about, the things you may find in it, and the benefits and even disadvantages of having one. Let's jump right in. So, what is a DMZ? Have you ever heard of a DMZ in terms of war and geopolitical relations? You may have heard that North and South Korea have a small little piece of land where they can meet and be civil. It's the little part that connects the safe and trusted side with the dangerous and untrusted side. The same can be said for a DMZ in a network. A DMZ is considered a perimeter network and adds an extra layer of security that protects the internal network. It will assume connections coming from the internet to be hostile and untrusted. And the organizational corporate network is the one that needs to be kept secure. So we put a DMZ between that and we'll keep various things, such as web and email servers. We'll go into what's inside a little bit later. The assets in a DMZ will be able to communicate with other things on the internal network, but this is monitored and significantly restricted. Ultimately, the main goal of a DMZ is to provide untrusted internet connections access to the resources while still making sure the internal network is kept safe in the process. How does a DMZ work? A business might have a web server that's accessible from the internet. One way to protect it is to host the server on a firewall, but that may make performance subpar. What's better is to isolate the section of the network that's easily accessible from the internet. The DMZ is a buffer of sorts, and there's still a firewall between the internal network and the DMZ. When implementing a DMZ in a network, the goal is access control. DMZs restrict access to sensitive information in servers, even though outside users can access the network, there's still a buffer in between. Other than this, the DMZ also provides an extra security through enabling access control, preventing network reconnaissance, and blocking IP spoofing. Enabling access control allows an organization to provide access to their services from the internet without granting access to internal networks through segmentation, and preventing network reconnaissance. There's a buffer between the internet and the DMZ, which helps prevent threat actors from performing reconnaissance. On top of the DMZ being segmented, there's an additional firewall, ultimately preventing anyone from seeing inside the internal network. If the DMZ gets compromised, the internal firewall will keep the private network separated from the DMZ, keeping it secure and making external reconnaissance hard. As for blocking internet IP spoofing, one way a threat actor can gain access to a system is by spoofing an IP, meaning it's falsifying and impersonating a device that's already approved and signed into the network. The DMZ is capable of discovering and installing these attempts as another service verifies the legitimacy of the IP address. Firewall architecture of a DMZ. Even though the DMZ is wide open, there are still hardening strategies and approaches in order to protect it. There are single and dual firewall approaches. With a single firewall, there will be three network interfaces. One will handle the external network device that makes the connection to the ISP, and the internal network is connected by the second device. Finally, the connections with the DMZ will be handled by the third network device. Though a single firewall is a good means of protection, having dual firewalls is even better. They will be more costly. There will be a firewall that is referred to as the fronted firewall, and it's configured to allow only traffic destined for the DMZ. The second firewall, or the back-end firewall, is used for the traffic that travels from the DMZ to the internal network. One way to amp up the security even more is to use two different firewalls from separate vendors, since they're less likely to have the same security vulnerabilities. Lastly, if a threat actor does manage to break through one firewall, the second firewall will provide another obstacle. Let's talk about some systems found in the DMZ. Web servers. This is a server that holds public information that allows internet access. You might find a website information held on this. Frontend e-commerce transaction server. This is used to place orders, but the client information will be stored on the back end behind a firewall. Mail servers. This will relay outside mail onto the inside. Authentication services and servers. This will let you into an internal network. VPN endpoints. These offer services to the internal network, but they're still kept in the DMZ as they can service remote users outside of the network. FTP servers. These servers will host critical content on the website of the organization, along with allowing direct interaction with files. This means they need to be isolated from the internal systems. Honeypots. 
Honeypots are devices that look appealing to the threat actor, but there's nothing of importance on them. They can even be deliberately vulnerable with fake files on them. They're beneficial because the attacker's behavior can be monitored from a distance. Lastly, we've talked about some benefits. Now let's talk about the downsides of a DMZ. Some downsides of the DMZ are that they don't fix the risks of the internal employee access to sensitive data inside of the network. There's also a false sense of security, especially if the DMZ isn't maintained. And remember, it's not an end-all security barrier from the internet to the internal network. If an organization mainly uses a cloud, there may not be use for a DMZ at all. In fact, some say that implementing a DMZ as of today may be a waste with the movement to cloud networks, and the functions will most certainly be found on that cloud environment. Thanks for watching. I hope you found some value in this video on DMZs. Please make sure to like the video and leave any questions you may have down in the comment section below. Thanks.